The first patient, almost three years old, had a near drowning episode three months previously and was semi apolic According to the pediatric neurologist, his outlook was zero. Uh, Eric was born August 2nd of 93. Uh, he was a perfectly normal child until uh, he had a head trauma before falling into a pool, which caused the near drowning. Uh, after the near drowning, they told us that he has uh, certain parts of his brain that were dead and has atrophy in the brain. And we heard about the Hyberic Chamber, so we are coming here to try and get some oxygen back into his brain. And today, Eric is going to be going for a repeat spec scan. The spec scan, again, which is a functional image of the brain, showed dramatic improvement in cortical function after hyperbaric oxygenation. It has filled in with areas that were not receiving enough blood or oxygen, and the patient is very much better and has really had a new life. The Cifuentes family says the medical community can debate hyperbaric oxygen all they want. They've come to their own conclusion as to what helped Eric. Besides God, <laughs> um, I'd say hyperbaric and uh, therapy, yeah, but definitely hyperbaric helped a lot. The next case was a very attractive 14-year-old white female by uh, diabetes. She developed a severe bout of hypoglycemia with seizure disorder producing marked brain injury. She had become almost total care, as can be seen in the video clips. This is how she was about two weeks after her injury. They kept her in a floor bed so she wouldn't hurt herself during her agitation. Go ahead, Amber. This is your chance to show out. This is the first time they tried to stand her up. It took three people to help her stand up. She had a nose tube in the time where they fed her through her nose. Here she is during therapy. You can see the pain in her face as they try to help her. The spec scan showed minimal cortical function, but after hyperbaric oxygenation, there was a mark filling in of the cortex, and although still patchy, there was about a 70 to 80 percent improvement in the scan, but the patient now became self-sufficient and is able to attend school. really good. She's got the smiles. She's got the smiles. That's for sure. Very good. Very good. Look at that smile. Kick your feet. Are you swimming? Oh, let me not get too close. Yeah. The next patient arrived in a wheelchair. He had had a massive stroke at birth. He was unable to use his left side at all. Cognitively, motor-wise, he was almost totally disabled. Well, David is three and a half years old. He is genetically normal, but the chromosomes wrong. David had what's called a vascular accident at birth. He was a product of a traumatic birth. He tore the left middle cerebral artery in his brain. The result is a very large infarction in the left hemisphere. And uh, as a result, he developed severe seizures. We were able to get those under control. But what we're left with is a severe and multiply impaired child. He functions at about a 10 to 15 month range.
the spec scans show almost a total lack of blood going to the left mid cerebral artery, which of course would involve his right side. But after hyperbaric oxygen, there was a dramatic improvement in the cortical flow, which paralleled the patient's condition. As you can see now, he runs all over the place. <laughs> this little lad had severe cerebral palsy due to a birth defect and a lack of oxygen. He had severe spasticity, scissors-like gait, the mentality of a two-year-old, and was almost total care. He has like ten words of speech. And he gets around by crawling on his hands and knees. And uh, his understanding is like a two-year-old, a three-year-old level. But he does comprehend to all his basic needs. The spec scan initially showed multiple patchy areas of lack of oxygenation and blood flow. But after the hyperbaric oxygen treatments, it became very evident that the perfusion of the brain and the use of oxygenation improved substantially, and again, this was clinical parallel. This little fellow, again, cognitively, motor-wise, fine motor, has improved in every way. All right, Jason. Okay, he's going to go around the corner that way. The tragedy of this beautiful little girl is that she was taken as an emergency after her head injury to a hospital that had a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. They would not treat her. They waited to see what would happen. At this time, uh, she has some mobility in her legs. Norms recognizes um, individuals she knows and is able to smile and laugh to some extent. Uh, she's not able to talk at this point. Uh, still has spasticity in her right arm, uh, to some degree in legs. The much published about traumatic brain injury, especially by Dr. Wassman in Germany, showing that the reduction in mortality and morbidity is statistically significant if traumatic brain injury is treated immediately. However, better late than never, and this little child has improved dramatically, as you can see on the video. Okay, say bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. See you later. Bye-bye. I want to go upstairs, Daddy. Well, go up, let me go up to climb up to the top. Let me see you do it. Can you do that by yourself? Yes, I could. Slow, 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 so you don't get hurt. Daddy, I'm ready to go Okay, hold on. Wait for your dad. On the last weekend of January 1999, nine-month-old Kevin developed an ear infection. At first, 
it seemed like nothing to be worried about. We had spoken to the doctors over the phone um, over the course of the weekend, and um, there wasn't any immediate need to bring him into the hospital, but something wasn't right. When Kevin's condition worsened, his mother took matters into her own hands. And it was just mother's intuition. I'll never forget. I mean, Colleen just had had enough, and she said, I'm taking him in. Soon after he arrived at the hospital, Kevin lapsed into a coma and was placed on a ventilator. Pediatric specialist Eduardo Hernandez was called in from a nearby hospital. He told the Fickles that Kevin's earache had turned into meningitis, an infection that causes a potentially deadly swelling of the brain's lining. The nine-month-old boy's brain was having the equivalent of a heart attack. When I spoke to the, to the Fickles for the first time, um, it was extremely difficult to communicate to them how serious this was. They were in a disbelief that this was happening to them. It was uh, a shock state for them. I knew he was seriously ill, but I also at the same time felt like he was going to be okay, you know, that they were going to fix it. But the odds against Kevin were overwhelming. Many cases of infant meningitis end in death. Countless other kids experience severe brain damage. Doctors put Kevin's odds for survival at less than 10%. Though he was still in a coma, Kevin's condition stabilized. Then, Dr. Hernandez made a horrifying discovery. A CAT scan revealed that five areas of Kevin's brain were dying from lack of blood flow. We have a CAT scan that said Kevin was going to be either brain dead or a vegetable for the rest of his life. Then, Dr. Hernandez came up with a daring plan. He believed that Kevin's only chance was a highly experimental treatment called hyperbaric oxygen therapy. HBOT, as it is sometimes called, involves placing the patient in a high oxygen environment under pressure that forces oxygen into every tissue of the body. We know hyperbaric oxygen therapy is considered experimental, but at this point, we had nothing else to offer to Kevin. This was his last chance. Without a moment to spare, Kevin was rushed into treatment. He's rolled in on a gurney, and the tank is sealed. And then it's taken down very slowly to uh, 1.5 atmospheres, which is about the equivalent of 16 feet in diving. And the pressure forces the oxygen into all the tissues of the body. Almost immediately, Lynn says he noticed that his son was responding to the experimental treatment. You could just see it was like breathing new life into him, this, this, this uh, pure oxygen environment. And we'd take him in for an hour a day, and he just got better and better. And it was just something to watch. Then, on the third day of treatment, something remarkable happened. Kevin opened his eyes for the first time in a week. I see those big blue eyes. I see those big blue eyes. And it was very exciting. I'm sure when he opened them, he was thinking, where am I and what is going on? What is this tube in my throat? Hi, Daddy. Hi, Daddy. He was getting stronger. Uh, he was starting to fight the tube in his mouth. It was agitating him. That's a very good sign. That was the answer to our prayers that we've been waiting for. This is the first step in the recovery. And we knew that this was an important step. Before long, Kevin was taken off the ventilator that had kept him alive. Amazingly, he was now able to see, hear, and even speak. It was as if a miracle were unfolding before everyone's eyes. I would not have dreamed, given the early prognosis that we were presented, that Kevin would be where he is today. Today, Kevin is a curious and active two-year-old who has made an astounding recovery from an almost certain death sentence. His parents believe they owe it all to his doctor and a daring experimental treatment. Explaining Kevin's recovery is impossible. This is something that you, you, don't, you don't have an understanding of why this happens. You, you don't know how that it happened. In my view, this was a miracle. This was one of the miracles that science does not produce. It's our hope that Kevin will help others, that his recovery will 
show others that recoveries like these are possible and that they do happen. Over the course of this work, uh, covering at least the last six years, I've been able to observe more than 100 patients, particularly those with uh, children with neurologic disorders, who've had the combination of spec scanning before and after a course of hyperbaric therapy. And there's actually quite a close correlation between the scan results that are seen on the spec scans and the clinical results that are observed in these patients. What has been observed is, is that at times sometimes there's rather striking improvements both on the scans and particularly in the patients and of course that's what we're really interested in is clinical results, people getting better. Some of the striking results that have been observed is that for instance in some children who had near drowning episodes they've had rather significant improvements sometimes to the point of returning to normal function. An intrinsic part of this work has been the fact that in doing scans on patients before and after a course of therapy, each person thereby serves as a control, namely the reference point for any course of therapy in them. And in this way, the spec scanning has resulted in being an objective mechanism to document the results of the therapy in these patients. The first patient, almost three years old, had a near drowning episode three months previously and was semi apolic According to the pediatric neurologist, his outlook was zero. Uh, Eric was born August 2nd of The SPEC scan, again, which is a functional image of the brain, showed dramatic improvement in cortical function after hyperbaric oxygenation. It has filled in with areas that were not receiving enough blood or oxygen, and the patient is very much better and has really had a new life. Fuentes family says the medical community can debate hyperbaric oxygen all they want. They've come to their own conclusion as to what helped Eric. Besides God, <laughs> um, I'd say hyperbaric and a uh, therapy, yeah, but definitely hyperbaric helped a lot. The tragedy of this beautiful little girl is that she was taken as an emergency after her head injury to a hospital that had a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. They would not treat her. They waited to see what would happen. At this time, uh, she has some mobility in her legs. Norms recognizes um, individuals she knows and is able to smile and laugh. 
to some extent. Uh, she's not able to talk at this point. Uh, she still has spasticity in her right arm uh, to some degree in legs. The much published about traumatic brain injury, especially by Dr. Wassman in Germany, showing that the reduction in mortality and morbidity is statistically significant if traumatic brain injury is treated immediately. However, better late than never, and this little child has improved dramatically, as you can see on the video. Okay, say bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. See you later. Bye-bye. Well, go up, let me go up to climb up to the top. Let me see you do it. Can you do that by yourself? Yes, I could. Slow, slow, slow. You don't get hurt. Daddy, I'm ready to go. Okay, hold on. Wait for your dad. The next two cases will demonstrate the imaging changes after hyperbaric oxygen in closed head injuries. The first was a 36-year-old female who 18 months prior to hyperbaric oxygen had a severe high-speed accident. She almost died for a number of weeks, eventually made somewhat of a recovery, but uh, had cognitive problems, motor problems, and just was not capable of uh, living uh, in a community. It was felt that by the attendings that she should be uh, probably cared for for life. The patient's uh, SPECT imaging showed improvement bilaterally in the temporal parietal areas and the frontal area with some in the uh, temporal. This patient, after 36 hyperbaric oxygen treatments, is now capable of returning to work. The next imaging is on CS, who was a 44-year-old male who seven months prior to hyperbaric oxygen sustained a high-speed accident. It was comatose, eventually came out of this, but uh, had uh, severe spastic uh, motor problems along with cognitive functioning. His wife was advised to put him away for permanent care. The insurance company at that point had spent $460,000 on rehabilitation. The patient has now had about 120 hyperbaric oxygen treatments along with our concomitant therapy <clears throat> and is capable of returning to work. He plans to return to Toledo and will run for president of the Boilermakers Union. The imaging changes uh, showed hypoperfused areas bilaterally in the infer inferior frontal and inferior parietal areas, anteriorly with additional focal zone of reduced activity in the right post parietal or posterior temporal topography and we can see on the slide after oxygen that these areas improve substantially again indicating recoverable brain tissue and finally a brief clip in black and white on a young man, 17, who while jogging was hit by a car and thrown about 80 feet. This happened a year before we treated him. He was semi-vegetative. As you can see from the clip, he has made steady progress and now is back in college. He took about 180 hyperbaric oxygen treatments. Since the accident, Jeff has had more than 100 treatments with high pressure oxygen. He's now a college graduate. Truly, I believe I would still be in the hospital really any much different than I am, not than I was. I'm thankful that he, that he brought me here. Uh, I, I, I will believe in hyperbaric oxygen for the rest of my life.